my beer ka mankalakala tandanya mianaka. Naita yungandalia, naita yakanandalia, pardon me adlu wadu. On behalf of the Ghana people, I welcome you all to Ghana country, and I do this ambassador of that late plains people. My brothers, my sisters, let's walk together in harmony. They tell you.
It can be turned into natural gas. It requires processing for that to happen, and that's what is going to be happening in Queensland so that it can be compressed and put on big ships and exported. But doing that um, consumes about 20% of its energy value and it negates about 30% of its clean energy character. Unconventional gas has a different and heavier greenhouse gas footprint compared to um, natural gas. Um, and I imagine that we'll get to that later with one of the other speakers. I'm from Queensland, from the head of the Darling. Greetings from where the system starts. About 23% um, of Queensland is covered by um, <coughs> petroleum exploration permits, and I should point out that petroleum exploration includes gas. So the tenements that you see on that map of Queensland there are not all gas. Some of those are also oil. And as I said, about 23% of the case per state. I brought along some maps. I'm passionate about the Murray-Darling Basin and also about the Great Artesian Basin. I brought along some maps here that my NRE board has produced of the um, extent and potential impacts of coal seam gas on the Queensland part of the Murray-Darling Basin. So most of those maps are here, but this one I couldn't get a hard copy of. And the green area on that is what the Queensland Government has mapped as our prime farming land, our strategic cropping land. Now, that covers a total of about 4% of Queensland, and that area, when the legislation goes through, will, will be protected from mining. But it is not protected from coal seam gas. And you can see the yellow dots and the purple and the pipelines and so on on that map, and that's an indication of the of our prime farming land, our food bowl, that is going to be alienated from food production because of um, coal seam gas. Um, coal seam gas is being extracted from the Great Artesian Basin. I live in the, in the Murray-Darling part of Queensland and the part of the Great Artesian Basin that's being targeted in my neck of the woods is the Walloon coal measures. Um, so there's a sequence of many aquifers and the big fat brown chunk in the middle there is the uh, Walloon coal measures. That's the area that four companies are basically targeting to extract coal seam gas. At one end of the Walloon coal measures, they're quite shallow, only about 200 metres below the surface. And at that end, the eastern end, they're very firmly connected to a very important shallower groundwater resource called the condomine alluvium that is absolutely essential to irrigated agriculture in my region. And over the last 20 years or so, that aquifer, that alluvial source has been seriously over-allocated and in the last 10 years or so, irrigators have had to make very si substantial um, reductions in their entitlements. They've done this voluntarily because they want the resource to be sustainable. Um, but of particular concern to people like me is the fact that we know that this system is connected to the Great Artesian Basin. We know that there's going to be an impact on water levels in that aquifer and obviously irrigators who have gone to a great deal of trouble to restructure their businesses are deeply concerned about their security of access to that water. Hydraulic fracturing is obviously a big concern in Queensland. Um, there's a lot we don't know about it. Um, you can read the stuff there. The, the real um, unknowns, the risks are of connecting adjoining aquifers and the risk of hypersaline water or gas or the fracking chemicals contaminating water sources that other people are using for either household or stock or domestic or industrial uses. Um, and of great concern is the fact that of the 50 or 60 so chemicals that are being used in hydraulic fracturing in Queensland, only four of those have ever been assessed by a national industrial chemical regulator. So there is no known guideline level about safety for exposure to people. Um, Coal seam gas companies have unlimited take. Their water is not regulated under the Water Act as per everybody else. How much water is actually going to be taken is really not known. It depends a great deal on the eventual size of the industry. Probably around 350 gigalitres a year and that compares with the current total Great Artesian Basin water use that you can see there and is um, dwarfed by it dwarfs the savings that have been made by the Great Artesian Basin Sustainability Initiative over the last 10 years. Thank you very much, Sarah. So we have an idea of the magnitude of the task and we've got an introduction of what it looks like in Queensland. Um, I'm now going to call upon Andrew from Santos um, to, and we've got a slide presentation for you. Um, not the track, <laughs> um, thank you, Andrew. Right, thanks very much, Don. Uh, thanks for inviting uh, uh, Santos. We're really pleased, really pleased to be here because uh, the reason is Santos is very keen 
to uh, interact with the community and with any concerns and work through with those concerns so that we get a solution uh, to whatever they may be. So we're really pleased to be here tonight uh, to, to discuss our view. There's just two points that I really want to put across tonight. The first one is that it is quite fundamental, uh, the reality that to get... Oh, sorry. Yeah, can people hear me okay? Um, it is a fundamental reality that gas is required to achieve a low carbon economy. Um, there is no serious dispute <coughs> of this point that um, that gas and renewables uh, will coexist together, um, and that in, for example, in Australia, it is a reality that over the last ten years, both uh, gas fired generation and renewables have have grown in tandem to to meet uh, to meet demand. But but uh, Australia is only a small part of the global economy, and if you look at that um, that slide there, which doesn't come up all that well, um, but the, the point that I want to make there is that if you look at that slide, the growing economies of the world, uh, which are sort of slightly dark in that uh, in that slide, are growing at a rapid rate. They are going to need energy. The only way that um, they're going to supply that, that they're going to achieve a lower carbon economy is if they use gas. The other point is that. Um, the renewable technologies aren't available today to supply uh, the energy demands without thermal generation. And it's a fact that coal-fired coal -fired, uh, ge generation um, does have a higher carbon footprint than gas-fired combined cycle uh, generation. So it's imperative that we develop the, the abundant coal and gas reserves we have uh, in this country so that we can achieve a lower carbon footprint in our lifetime. So that's the first point. The second point is, if you wouldn't like to put the next slide. Um, the next point is uh, slightly closer to home. Um, and the point is that uh, the coal and gas industry and agriculture can coexist. This is a photo uh, taken <coughs> recently um, of a farm in Queensland um, that is being, uh, that is utilizing treated coal seed gas to, to grow um, fodder crops. Uh, that are that have been then fed to, to cows. Um, this is this has uh, occurred after three years of research and development between Santos and the landowner, um, and is going to result in up to a 25% increase in productivity um, of that farm over the next 30 years. Um, it's also important to understand in the area that this is done in the Santos area, none of that water comes from the surface aquifers; it all comes from the coal seam uh, water, um, and there's no interconnectivity between those those two uh, aquifer sets. In fact, over, over the 15 year period that Santos has been extracting coal seam gas in Queensland, there has been no measurable change in the surface aquifers in those areas. And the coal seam gas produced by Santos uh, now, now uh, supplies the majority of the, uh, of the Queensland gas flow in that, uh, in that state. Thanks. Thank you very much.